Actually, why don't you come up? You can come up with me and then. Yeah. Okay. So we can get started. I know everybody has a tight schedule, so we'll, we'll try to st stay on schedule. Uh, just a bit of introduction. Uh, my name is Adnan. I work for Dell, and I run the global strategy for the networking BU within, within Dell, uh, which is a pretty fancy title, which means I just get to go on airplanes to all the fun cities in the world and, and, and talk to people. So we have, by the way, Andy here as well. Andy runs our EMEA uh, networking team as well. So I think uh, if, uh, any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, we, can, we can probably answer those things. So uh, the reason why we come and do this is to give you guys an idea about what we are doing uh, uh, to help change the world and, and also get your input and, and feedback on, on what, you, what you guys think about where we are going uh, as far as the industry is concerned, as far as some of the things that you guys are doing. So please uh, feel free to stop me. Uh, interrupt. I mean, uh, uh, this is a great opportunity for us to learn, uh, and that is quite honestly my incentive to come to these forums. It's not to be, not for this to be a one-way thing, but essentially uh, engage with you guys. And I'm around. Um, uh, I should have put my email address up there, but if you need to talk in detail, uh, feel free to grab me, and I'll give you my card. And I'm I'm at the summit uh, until Wednesday, so. Either me or Andy would be happy to have any any conversation. So, so just to give you get an idea about the folks, how many people here touch networking on a daily basis? Okay, uh, <coughs> partners, vendors versus people that actually deploy. So, people who deploy net and manage networks. Okay, fairly good group. Okay, so so what is what is open networking? Let's let's start with that. Uh, I think the when we were looking at the industry. Um, this, this word SDN, uh, uh, I think it's the second most abused word in the industry after cloud. Uh, and uh, at Dell, we were trying to figure out how, how, what, is, what is the next big thing as far as networking is concerned. And, and we didn't have to go back. If you, if you look at what happened on the server side, it gave us the next logical transition in the networking space. So what happened on the server side, if you look at it, the industry moved from the mainframe model. I mean, we used to buy vertically integrated systems, either from our friends at Sun or, or other, other vendors. I'm going to try and not take vendor names because I can get in trouble and I have my own opinion. So, so I'll but, but what happened was, if you look at how the application ecosystem evolved, it was because we moved to standard architectures from a chipset standpoint on compute. We part gave customers and partners the ability to run their choice of operating system on the compute platform, which actually served as an application host. And then the application ecosystem evolved. And today, as, as operators or as, as people that deploy infrastructures, you, you're forced by the application requirements, which are driven by the business requirements, to go and deploy an x86-based infrastructure. How many people here still buy and deploy mainframes? How many people work with x86-based architectures? Right? So it happened on the compute side. And, and Dell was very uh, integral in, in, in that part of the industry. And I think what happens is that is exactly where we think the networking industry is going. And, and what we did was essentially this. So it's not overly complicated. This is our vision for software-defined networking. And what it means is that we basically started down this journey a few years ago by moving to merchant silicon, open hardware, and then now we have given the customers the ability to run different operating systems on our switching platforms. Because if you look at this is exactly what happened on the compute side. And the reason is that every infrastructure has different requirements. So why should we be making the decision as to what operating system you need to deploy? And if you Go back and you look at how networking works today. You go, you buy proprietary ASICs. I mean, you basically buy the box from either us or our friends across in the industry. Then you have completely integrated, tightly controlled protocols that run. And the only way you can do SDN is either through OpenFlow or API access or programmability or, or, or things that, that people offer you. But if you go down this direction, which is what we have enabled now, we, we, we announced two partnerships. One was Cumulus, which exact is, a, is a complete Linux-based operating system. How many people here are familiar with Cumulus? They actually have a booth down there, so go talk to those guys. It's essentially a full Linux OS. So when you do deploy it, it brings up a Linux batch prompt. So 
the idea is that why is networking so different than compute, right? So for that, you have to give people the ability to run standard hardware on the networking devices like they do on the server side. Put an operating system that can actually serve as an application host. So tomorrow, if you want to go write code that you want to run on switch because you think you can do things in a better way, you should have that flexibility. You want to run standard L2, L3 protocol, that will work as well. So it gives you a transition path, and that is what we believe is the true definition of SDN, because the first word in SDN is S, which stands for? Exactly. Second partnership we announced was with Big, Big Switch. Um, essentially, their tapping solution, because we believe it's a very non-intrusive way to come and, and uh, give people the ability to run monitoring on their infrastructure, and now we're going to partner with them on the Cloud Fabric solution as well. But, but the idea is, from a, from a high-level strategy standpoint, this is where we are going. It's not overly complicated, and you guys have the ability to do what you want to do. And that's how Dell networking, we believe, is different than anybody else in the industry. We, by the way, have our own OS. We are continuing to invest in it. But we want you guys to make a choice. Now, if you look at it, what does this do? It actually enables your ecosystem. You are, as customers, as partners, as vendors, can put your solution together and bring a solution to the market which is not what is defined by either us or our competitors. So if you look at this, standard ASICs, our OS, we are going to keep coming out with other choice of operating system, overlay networks, and then you can do monitoring. It, since it's a Linux operating system, you can actually leverage all of Linux ecosystem out there to deploy any kind of Linux packages that you want. Now just because, please do remember, <coughs> Switch does not have the same compute power as a server. So with great power comes great responsibility. So you need to be careful as to what you run at that layer. But essentially, this unlocks a complete ecosystem for you guys to look at your infrastructure in a truly agile way. Second thing is the way you deploy. How many people here run L2 in their networks? Layer 2? Layer 3? So you can still deploy it like that. And then when you're ready to move to this direction, you can transition along with Dell. And that's how I believe that Dell is very different than anybody else in the industry. And you are going to keep, you're going to see other innovations come up here on, from our side. And then we are, going to, we are right now working on these ecosystem partners. Basically with us, you can deploy an end-to-end -end solution either with VMware or, or Midikura. So that's how we are putting it all together compared to a lot of other friends in the industry which are actually still uh, making it a vertically integrated model. So, everybody, do you guys get, think this is a good direction? Do you think this is we're wrong? We're, we're, it'll be good to get some feedback. Questions, comments? Okay. So, how does this work in this thing? So, if you look at, now let's go up and look at the data center. So what is happening in the data center is essentially there is a disaggregation happening across software-defined compute, happened with virtualization, software-defined networking is happening, and software-defined storage is the next thing which is coming about, right? Essentially, the idea is to disaggregate your hardware from the app OS and from the application layer. Essentially, you should build agile infrastructures irrespective of the application that you're running, and your infrastructure should be able to serve any application dynamically and adapt. So if you think about this, happened with compute, server virtualization, right? I think everybody here runs virtual infrastructures, I'm assuming. So compute was the first thing that got virtualized. Essentially, one server can become 10 servers, right? And this is where we are taking this. I'm not going to talk about storage because this is a networking session, but this is what we are doing. Essentially, we are basically going to abstract the physical <coughs> hardware from the OS and then the application. We, we think that there is no reason for you to get on the CLI and, and start making commands. I mean, this is where things are going. So the point is, that with us or with Dell, you actually have the ability to go down this journey 
some of our friends across in the industry, it's either a rip and replace because I, you buy one thing from them or you deploy their infrastructure, it has to be completely vertically integrated. Support, their choice, their OS, their hardware. You can only go down this road if you actually break the model up. And with, we are giving you the ability to do so at your pace when you're ready because nobody's going to deploy a full STN infrastructure tomorrow morning. It is all the capital investments that you make. You can sort of slowly start moving in that direction. But this is essentially our thinking as to where we are doing. So compute happened. Networking is happening now. We actually announced a partnership with Newtonics on the storage side. I don't know how many people here are familiar with Newtonics. So we have started going down that road on the storage side as well. And, and, and that's where we are going with this. So how does this tie into OpenStack? OpenStack is a cloud OS. It actually gives you the ability to manage infrastructure. So you can <coughs> pick the right OS for you. And we'll get into some of those examples. Whichever one suits your needs and your application requirements, and quite honestly, your tastes. At, at some point, uh, you know, it becomes a choice of religion as well. I mean, some people are completely interested in running L2 and don't want to move away from L2. Some people have moved to L3. And, and for, I mean, I've, I've had many uh, religious debates with customers across the world on this thing, and this is, these are perspectives. So the idea here is that if you have a topology that is running L2 and that is your direction, you have that choice. If you want to go L3, you have that choice. You want big switch, you want to deploy a full STN fabric that is completely controlled by an STN controller, you have that ability. And you can move around, by the way. Can you deploy a different OS on the server? Can you move from Windows OS to Red Hat? How many people here can do that? If I give you a machine, can you switch OSs on it? Yes? Yes, right? I mean, it's just setup.exe. Why can't you do that with networking? So the idea is that today, let's say you start with this, which is a traditional OS, and you run your fabric and your infrastructure in a certain direction. Tomorrow or day after tomorrow, you realize you have applications that can optimize and run your infrastructure in a better way. We give you that flexibility to go do that. That is the direction we are going on compared to a lot of other partners out there. Yeah, question, comment? See the idea. I mean, we have all these vendors like Big Switch, for example. Um, you just did their copper rack uh, Big Switch beta mm -hmm. uh, for OpenStack. And unless we deploy something like Ceph, we can kind of like integrate with Ceph uh, to put data near its compute nodes. Yeah. We have this huge like constraint with the offline computing copper rack. <coughs> so the, the, our stance right now is that we are basically providing the platform. Mm -hmm. So what you are saying is more on an application optimization sure. space. I hope that somebody picks this up as the platform and actually develops that on top of it. This but doesn't exist on the roadmap. It does, it, it does not exist on the roadmap. And the reason is because we have, I mean, to be very frank, we have limited number of resources. So if you, if you think about this, let me, let me step back. The reason why this is interesting is because of the following reason. If you are Amazon, Google, you can go do this yourself, by the way. They have done it with ODM. How do you bring a technology in mainstream enterprise? The only way to do that is if a customer has the ability to pick up the phone and say, I don't need 10,000 switches, I just need two, because that is what my infrastructure is. And we are giving them that ability. And if they have a problem, they pick up the phone and call Dell. If you are based in Europe, you pick up the phone and call Andy and, 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 and scream and shout at him, right? That's how we are, so we are actually bringing this to the mainstream enterprise. Now, with that, the first strategy is that all of this Requires a lot of resources to certify and, and get it all working, and that is where we are interested in. On the compute side, we did not take a stance on the, on the layer above the platform, if you, if you look at what Dell did. On the networking side, we are, we are, we are, we are thinking about it. <coughs> Let me put it that way. I mean, what the, the, but we do think that that problem needs to be solved by the data layer, by, by the application layer, not in the networking space. Because if you look at it, when software-defined storage comes in, right? I mean, if you take Nutanix as an example, are you familiar with Nutanix? Anybody? How many people here are familiar with Nutanix? Because I'm going to use that. OK. So what Nutanix essentially is, because a lot of people are not, is essentially giving you a SAN capability on compute. So it's software-defined storage. What you do is you have direct attached storage on the server. 
So it runs the application or the software on it that gives you the ability to replicate your data across so it actually acts like a SAN, okay? Now, your storage is actually running on a server which can die any day, right? So the software has the intelligence to provide. <coughs> now, when you look at that concept, it is the it is the software defined storage controller that has the ability to decide where it's going to move the data, right? So the idea is by pro by providing a platform in the networking OS, they have the ability to go program the network the way they want to, right? So that is that is the reason why we have sort of not crossed that boundary. The other thing is, if you look at it, I mean, one of the things we'll talk about is if you build a full class network with lower subscription and, and the price points on the 40 gig are going down, you, I mean, network should be a highway. I mean, essentially it's a freeway. So if you build, you, sh you should be fine from that standpoint. So point taken, very well valid point, but right now it's not on the roadmap and, and these are some of the reasons why we have sort of walked that fine line. I mean, I, I, get, I get these ideas from my own team that we should go tweak this, we should go tweak this, but I mean, right now we are in the business of providing the platform and let you guys decide how you want to go do that. So for your L3 portion, are you going to integrate the X-Lens routing within that? Yes, platform? so it's integrated in L3 portion. So that's how you provide the overlay. So, so hardware support is that? Yes, hardware? so try, uh, basically our, mo uh, moving forward, all, our, uh, all of our next generation processors are going to be x86. The reason being that if you deploy if you write a monitoring application, for example, right, it's compiled on a server on Linux, it's x86, so it should just run on the switch because it's x86 processor. And the second is we are moving down the Broadcom ch chipset road, so our platforms are all, all Broadcom, and Trident 2 supports VXLAN capabilities in the hardware. So it's a hardware feature that, that needed to be there for us to go support that. So, And then just an additional comment, I mean, basically, if you look at on the compute side, right, if you look at VMware, that has the intelligence to go do vMotion and all those things, essentially the intelligence is in the application. And, and so that's, the, that's where we are going. But we do understand that networking is a, not as trivial. It's a little more complicated. So, so we need to maybe go make some tweaks, and, 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 and the CTO team actually is working on some of those things. I don't know if Sanjay is in the room. He was supposed to be here. He's from the CTO office. Maybe he'll come. So if you look at... We are giving you guys the ability to deploy these open standards and platform-based solutions in OpenStack as well. So if you are if you're an L2 customer, I mean, this is fairly straightforward. You can deploy an L2 domain. The difference between us, I mean, L2 is same across the board for most vendors, but the difference is with us, you have the flexibility to move in the direction that you want to move in. So it, it actually completely integrates with your existing L2 networks. There is no rocket science with L2. Personally, I'm not an L2 fan. I don't know how many people here are L2 fans. I don't mean to offend anybody. I think L3 is a much cleaner solution and, and, and uh, less, less, less issues when you mess up the cabling or, 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 or something like that. But you can deploy your infrastructure the way you, you deploy it. You can do, uh, uh, so you can do subnets. You know, you can do service isolation, all that, all those things the way you do L2 networks today. So it actually completely integrates with your deployments. So that's Cumulus plus Dell. I mean, giving you, I wanted to use this as an example as to how a hardware from Dell and software from somebody can actually tie into an overall solution, which is the first in the industry, by the way. You could, uh, you can't do that with our friends at HP, our friends at, Cisco, I hope they're not in the room, or if they are, I'm sorry. I mean, you don't have the ability to do that. You can't go and tell these guys that I like your switch, I have bought your switch, but I want the flexibility to run a different OS because it is the direction that I want to go in. So essentially breaking the model. And I think this is something you were referring to. So we, uh, full L3 capability. I think the reason why I like this is because you get load balancing you, via ECMP for free. I mean, it's an easy way to load balance across your network, and, and you can change the hash algorithms depending on how you want to uh, do load balancing within your infrastructure, but using VXLAN, you can actually go and deploy this. The reason why this is, we have the chipset name up there is because it's a hardware capability that Broadcom provides, so that's what has to get exposed to basically go support that. So essentially, you have this infrastructure, and then there are solutions out there that use the overlay technology on top of it, and then you can you can tie those off on top. But again, I wish I had a complicated solution like a lot of people out there. What we are doing is extremely simple. The only difference is we are giving you guys the ability 
to go and deploy solutions the way you want to. So I gave you, showed you an example of an L2 fabric. So if you're an L2 base, you still works. It actually augments to your existing network, so there is nothing you have to go change. L3 is much more standardized, so uh, L3 integrates with your L3 fabric. And if you look at this, this is the third uh, solution that you can deploy today, which is with Big Switch. How many people know about the cloud fabric from Big Switch? One, two, okay. So essentially, there's no layer two, layer three protocols. It's SDN controller, so what they've done is you basically run a controller on a server, and that actually figures out how to go route traffic. You can run it on Dell switching platform, and you can basically deploy an OpenStack solution using that. I think it, I mean, it's a very interesting idea. This is where the industry is going. The difference is how it talks to the outside world today is using static routes, and we are working with them on, on dynamic routing because that, that, that could be an issue because if you change a route on the outside, it, it has to get propagated within the fabric. But this is not running layer two, this is not running layer three. This is actually, the, this is just the data plane, and the decision on how to flow the packets is actually being made outside, which is SDN controller. Yes, but they do have proprietary stuff that they do on top of it, because if you look at it, you have to do a lot of things. You have to do the load balancing, you have to basically do routing. So uh, OpenFlow is what they use in a, in a standardized way on their uh, big tap solution, which is the monitoring part that replaces the Gigamon. Uh, but this is using OpenFlow, but they've done tweaks, proprietary tweaks that actually make it more optimized on that. So the reason why, let me sorry, answer that question in more detail. The reason why we did this was the following. If you look at traditional open flow deployments from people, how many people here know open flow? I just want to know, okay. So everybody did open flow because it was a standard, it was the only way to do SDN and, and good luck trying to get people to agree on a standard and then deploy, uh, implement the standard. Open flow was deployed in a way where we used to carve out tables, right? We will keep this much for regular L2, L3 and we'll carve out a portion of the uh, uh, hardware to basically uh, store the open flow data. The problem was we ran into that was that it wasn't scalable. So the reason why we gave Big Switch the ability to have complete control, because then they can actually control all of the Trident 2 uh, hardware table sizes. So all the, essentially open flow has the access to complete uh, 16K entries or whatever you want to do on the chipset, whatever the chipset does. So this is using open flow. Essentially that is the standard they follow. They all, the, their, their OS switch light actually supports OpenFlow, so you can technically tie it to another OpenFlow controller, but for their SDN fabric, they do recommend using their own controller because they do some proprietary fancy stuff to, to get this working in case of failures, in case of load balancing and, and things like that. And I think they're also here. I don't know if Prashant is here. Their CTO is a very, very smart guy, but drop me an email and, and happy to have a deeper conversation on that. But this is completely, yes, simplicity. Yes. 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 So a question. If if at the end of the day you are tied up in the in the system that you're sitting in, so why why do you need all this complication? Why not use just in the then the overlay, put all the smart uh, switches at once on the input switch and hypervisor and use the smart switch and not the input switch? See over you can. You can, it depends. I mean, at the end of the day, overlay technology, give me an example of an overlay technology that you would use. You can, that's what I said. Okay, but I'm saying you're putting here an open platform with fibers on the same wire, right? It is not for, that's, so I'm so not. You just switch, and you, you say, okay, you run Linux command on it, the packets will still be tied to the hardware, it will never be able to be updated, and if you cannot support this time, it will never support it. So what, what about this? So we face this solution, uh, or this problem rather, and uh, we went with the big switch network side. Just to look at this, because we were running a lot of limitations with that, like VSLAN on Linux kernel had like 100,000 packets per second limit. So unless you're doing like big packets on infinite band, like 65K, your throughput's limited to like about 10 gigs, which is very bad. Um, also latency stability, you get lots of spikes in latency because as the hypervisor starts doing a bunch of compute load, all of a sudden the control is housing these packets, it's running like NPC jobs and things like that, they go haywire, and you start to do stuff, goes haywire. Um, you need ASICs to like just keep stuff moving. Well, if you're doing it in a GPK, 
No, let me. For 10 gig? For, for 10 gig? 500 gig, 10 gig, yeah. It should be lower, but. 500 for 10 gig. So, so let, me, let, me, let me give you my Dell answer as when I put my Dell hat on, and then I love giving my opinions, and I'll give you my opinion, which has nothing to do with Dell. The fact that both two people here are having a conversation on two different preferences is exactly what we wanted to enable as a company, number one. Okay. Second thing is what you are talking about is right here. If it works for you, great. The problem is it depends on your scale. If you are going to deploy a 500 port 10 gig chassis, then you have, sorry, what, can you give me? We have about 1,000 now. We have two 500 gig switches, or 500 port switches. Okay, then you can actually deploy, deploy a, a class on the spine and, and drive the cars down even, even further. Or VF plan, not infinite. Exactly. Right? So uh, the latency is, an issue. Uh, latency is a thing. So eventually when you run a data center, so let's, this is maybe not a, maybe it doesn't work for people that have an enterprise infrastructure with 50 racks. I, I don't know. It's a preference issue at some point. People have a preference. But if you are a cloud provider that runs 50,000 servers in a physical servers in a data center, I personally have seen data centers that have 200,000 servers in one physical location. At that point, you want a lot more granular control and, and run things that are in a very simple way. Because a route getting uh, uh, a route route flapping happening on, happening on BGP can take your control plane down because the, you have limited processing power, right? So it depends on the scale. This solution, if somebody wants to go deploy it, is for people that actually want granular control. They can do a lot of these things, and they can plug into the STN controller and have more granular control over their fabric. For example, they can go and say, "I want when this happens." I want the flows to go this way. They, it gives you that level of ability to go control your infrastructure, essentially. It's not, I mean, VXLAN, overlay technologies, more enterprise play. To me, if you're running a big infrastructure on the cloud side, this could be a good play for that. For that. Because it gives you a lot more granular control. Essentially, using the controller, you can have the chipset access. If you want to do something funky, let's say if you want to go touch the, the fib on the switch, right, for whatever reason. This gives you that, that level of control. But the point is, from a Dell standpoint, we actually wanted to go down this road because we see customers that why is it that one size fits all? I mean, I, 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 for me, I always struggle with that. And if you're deploying an infrastructure with two racks, with 10 racks, with 5,000 racks, your requirements and your business needs are very, very different. As a company, I was shoving down one solution down your throat. Here, I'm giving you the flexibility to go down whichever road you want. If you're running 1,000 racks and you want to go run at that level of control, power to you. If you want to go run VXLAN, power to you. But me, as infrastructure provider, sorry, Dell, not me, as infrastructure provider, is going to give you the flexibility to do that and transition. So let's say you deploy that infrastructure with VXLAN and you run into scalability issues because you just got too big or you're doing something crazy. I give you the flexibility, sorry, Dell gives you the flexibility to move from that to this and see what works for you. No, so the VXLAN is, uh, Trident 2 supports VXLAN. So moving forward, all the Broadcom ASICs are on the roadmap going to support VXLAN. I get that. So we, when we, when we go release a platform, we are very cognizant of that. If there is an issue like that, we will come work with that customer very specifically if there is an issue. But the idea is when we move forward, we are going to, going to give you the ability to 
switch, which means if there is an issue like that, some, it's not a very, at the end of the day, when the chipset gets released, there are, there are updates that come in the SDK, usually, not in the chip respin, which gives you the flexibility. The next chipset from Broadcom is, is Tomahawk, right, which is the 100 gig platform. So there's nothing coming between now and then. So it's pretty stable till then. But then you're moving to 100 gig. Now I can't put a 100 gig port in a 40, in a, in a 40 gig chip. That's, that, that is a limitation. But today you can move between these two solutions on Dell hardware because again, depending on getting on the details, chips have revs. Depending on which rev you latch onto, you can, you can have that issue. So we, we, we are cognizant of that. And that is exactly where Dell comes in, right? I mean, if you have an issue like that, you can pick up the phone and call Dell that you committed this to me. It needs to work compared to going to a white box or, a, or an ODM provide. But I think, I mean, I'm interested in, in, in some of the things you talked about, so maybe we can yeah, catch some one-on-one, -on -one, because I think it's, it's very, I mean, I can, I can give you personal examples of a lot of things where VXLAN ran into scalability issues. It's just the size of the infrastructure, because no matter what, I have, if it depends on the scale. If you start hitting your control plane, data plane is not the problem, because it's line rate across the board. It's when you start hitting control plane, that's where the problem comes, and that comes at scale. And, and scale is, is, is a very relative term, right? And then we have our own solution, which is Dell IP, which is Dell Active Fabric Controller. We have a Neutron plugin, and it's a complete out-of-box solution, end-to-end -end Dell. So what, just to recap, what we are doing for SDN is the following. We are giving customers the ability to choose the right OS that works for them. Either it can serve as an application host and they can move. Same thing happened in compute and it, I think, was pretty successful. And we believe this is going to happen to networking. And it is happening. If you look at the growth numbers, the fastest growth in networking hardware was within the ODMs because people went to ODMs just because they didn't have anybody else doing this. So giving that choice, and then one size doesn't fit all. If you are an L2 customer base, we have a solution that works with the L2 fabric. If you are an L3 with overlay, it works there. If you want to go STN with big switch, we support that. And moving forward, we have our own IP solution as well, end-to-end -end Dell. If you, want, if you don't want to go through the trouble of putting it all together, and you want to pick up the phone and say, I want to get this, you have a solution from Dell as well. So, that's the, that's the direction we are going. Uh, I mean, just to, how many people here are familiar with MPLS? Okay, let me ask a question for my field. What do you think about giving an MPLS stack on a 32 port 40 gig switch? And you looked up. Okay, why? I, I don't know, I, I come from a world where I truly think MPLS is like a wing kind of a deal, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's all I think of it as. Okay. But I work Okay, that's my world is very different. It's now. very different. You know. Anybody else? Thoughts? Okay. So any questions, comments? Pretty straightforward. How do you do this world integrating with like I see a lot of the boxes like the C micro stuff coming out where you have like a three D course network built into a backplane that you kind of run all your tenants and everything inside of it and it's got a bunch of forty gig ports egress. Right, unless I have like 20 racks of those things. Or not necessarily, you know, I got all my tenant networking handled within this box, right? But then I have things between tenants, which between these big boxes that are just pumping, you know, 150 gig of data between them. Yeah, I think it's a, so we, we were also looking at that solution. There was an Intel chip that was working for Haswell, I think. I know on Haswell. Yeah, Haswell. So, so, so so the idea here is, the one, I mean, we do have a, we did, we are going down that road. I don't know if you're familiar with our MXL platform. So on, on Dell Blade servers, we actually have a, uh, have a switch, a 40 gig switch that goes straight into the back of the, plane, uh, the back of the chassis that actually provides that capability. Uh, and then, I mean, you can actually do 40 gig straight up from there. So if you are deploying HPC and you, you see, you I, you can. I cannot compete with, I just cannot compete with InfiniBand latency. I mean, I cannot compete with it, in, but if you, if you, depending on how, I mean, when you look at HPC deployments, it, it, it is a function of what your threshold is, right? What your threshold for latency. If the ethernet falls within the threshold of that, then, then it's, it's, it's a pretty good solution to go look at. Uh, 
Uh, and at the end of the day, I mean, a lot of that uh, decision to go to uh, uh, other vendors is driven by cost. I mean, it's a, it's a cost cost decision at that point, and and uh, and you have to put it all together. So we have a solution. We're going down that road. We had the first release of MXL. I mean, it's it's doing great. Essentially, Blade Server, plug it in, and you can put multiple. I think you can do six, right, Andy? You can do six. You can stack up to six. Six what? Yeah. yeah. So. How many Apples does that chassis or that support? Like we're getting a lot of Apple in this whole like, for example, the Arista switch is twenty thousand APLs, right? And that's it. You're done. You you cook the A. So the so we we do two things. So they we have a feature we implemented, and I don't I can I can get the details if I can get your card, Ryan. I can send those to you. Uh, the ACL limitation actually comes from the hardware. Mm -hmm. So since we are using the same chipset, we have the same hardware limitation. Okay. Uh, the second thing is we do have a feature where we do ACLs on the software to basically extend. We carve out, and, and I don't know if you've to, they've told you, they have a, the same feature as well. So, so you, can, you can do that. My personal opinion now is, I mean, we, we have customers. I mean, ACLs is not a very scalable solution. It's very hard to maintain. Uh, so I, yeah, it's, it, the question is, I don't know. I mean, you're using it for ice, traffic isolation. What are you using it for? And you control the application stack on the server? No, the users do. The users do. Okay, then you have then you have we no have others. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, if we control it, we could boil yeah. it down. But when we have 80 different people from 80 different research institutions, and they all have their own application requirements, right? I mean, one of the ideas I have is if you, I mean, this is just, a, I mean, we haven't done this. If you deploy Cumulus, no, no, I'm just saying, if you look yeah. at Cumulus, you can write a software app, Linux app on top, deploy it. That actually does it for you. So instead of instead of saying you can dynamically actually do deny all right when you give it to somebody else, so let's say this is where you're running, and this is how we believe we are much cooler than the guys that you're talking about. I think they they went halfway; they didn't they didn't go all the way, all the way. Although their hardware designs on on 140 gig are pretty interesting too. But our philosophy there is small boxes, big boxes. When they die, they take half the infrastructure down with you. Uh, so we have a 132 port, 40 gig in three RU because we believe that you can build a class with that. So just, just uh, so what you do is, you, if you run Cumulus right here, right, you can actually run a Linux, you can write a Linux 50 lines of code that does deny all and allow one. Sure. And you can change it dynamically when you give your infrastructure to somebody else. Okay. That, I mean, it's a creative way to go do it, but that's one way you can get beyond the ACL. So because the thing is, you program your ACLs once and you don't want to touch them because it's a, one to, it's a big ACL file, right? Yeah. But, but that is a good, uh, 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 a cleaner, fun solution. So, so. yeah, like on like Combo Network Camel does not work. Yeah, I think Mina is here. Uh, yeah, Mina is here from Cumulus downstairs. Uh, if you if you have time, just just tell her Adnan uh, when I talk. I mean, she she's a, she's a pretty smart person, so she could you could actually chat to her about cool. it on on doing some of these things. So, okay. So, Sorry to change the tone, Master, on a non technical question. Absolutely. Just trying to work out where kind of Dell's value add is with the the non Dell solution. Obviously. You're saying kind of Dell's giving you as many options to, to run any. But customers could run those other two options anyway without Dell's blessing. Absolutely. Dell, Dell Compute, put those layers in. Obviously, the Dell SDN controller is going to speak for them. Yeah. Um, so when you say you're, you're giving customers that option, what do you mean there? Are you validating designs with those systems? You're, 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 supporting those you're, systems? You're, you're, it's a very valid question. Um, if you look at the, I'll start from the, give you a few facts. If you look at the one gig decline in price per port, the graph was like this. Okay, there was a there was a time when people used to pay thirty grand for a one gig switch. By the way, the ten gig decline in the industry was like this. The forty gig decline is like this. So that tells you one thing: that this whole notion of going and charging you fifty thousand dollars for a top of rack, those days are going away. Number one, customers are getting smart. The second thing is customers want a choice. If you look at the ODM growth, you know what an ODM is? You know, they're downstairs, Quanta and some of our friends there. They grew 23 to 43% last year, and depending on the region you talk about, which means that there are customers that want that ability, but they have to put it all together now. 
What is Dell's value in this? Number one, if you have a problem, who do you pick up and call, and who's going to support the solution? Number one. Number two, if you are a company, if you are Amazon or, or a big cloud provider that buys 50,000 switches a year, you can probably go set up your own supply chain. That is an operational cost, by the way. But if you are anybody smaller than that, you, have, you don't have to go set up your own supply chain. And you benefit from Dell's procurement power and the Dell solutions team that puts all this together for you and brings it to the market. But I wish to God I could come here and say it's overly complicated. Guys, it's not. This is happening to networking. I was, I was at OpenStack in Atlanta, and I did not have one customer win because we just announced the solution. I, I think Paris is five months later. I don't remember when Atlanta. I think Atlanta was in March, if I remember, March, April. We have grown our business by multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars in the last few months. Just because you can pick up the phone and say, listen, I want this solution. Send it to my doorstep. I don't want to bother it. And this is the TCO model that I'm going after. So my question to all of you is, since it's a Dell sponsored session, with the flexibility, if anybody buys a different vendor, please come and tell me what is it that we are doing wrong, because I really want to learn. I really want to know. I mean, I think we are, we, with all the options, the flexibility is worth protecting your investment. Fair enough? Any, I know we got into some conversations. Anybody else has any questions, comments in the back? OK, thank you, guys. Enjoy your day. Have fun.